March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization made an announcement. In the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The coronavirus, or COVID-19 disease, had already overwhelmed China, South Korea, Iran, and Italy. And this was a warning to other countries where it was now spreading quickly. In the days and weeks ahead, we expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths, and the number of affected countries climb even higher. The spread of COVID-19 was no longer something that could be stopped. But we can still slow it down. We just have to act right now. Someone with COVID-19 usually develops a fever and a cough. Aches, pains, and other mild symptoms are also possible, but are less frequent. But the severity of those symptoms varies, and for some people who get the virus, you might never show symptoms at all. Based on the data from China, the vast majority of cases are not life-threatening. In 80% of cases, people experience only mild disease, but in 20% of cases, the disease can manifest in a more serious way. It can develop into quite a severe pneumonia where people need to be hospitalized and put on ventilators. Overall, it seems like about 1-2% to 2 of known cases lead to death, but that rate is much lower for young people and much higher for the elderly. And it also seems that people with unmanaged underlying chronic diseases, they also have a tougher time overcoming the virus. The virus also seems to be very contagious, more contagious than the flu. All you need to do to spread COVID-19 is cough or sneeze on someone else, touch a surface where the virus still lives, and then put your hand in your mouth or your eyes or your nose. After getting infected, it can take an average of five to six days before you feel sick and your symptoms start to appear. But you can already spread it to people in that period, even if you feel healthy. Just as people realize they're sick, they seem to be at the most risk of passing it along to others. That's how the virus has been so effective at spreading across the world so quickly, and why the WHO was now calling COVID-19 a pandemic. But what they said next was just as important. We cannot say this loudly enough. All countries can still change the course of this pandemic. And that depends on something each of us needs to do as individuals. So diseases become really dangerous when everyone gets sick at once and the health system becomes overwhelmed. In any hospital, the capacity to treat patients is limited by how many beds they have. Think of this as the number of beds in your local hospital at any given time. A couple are already filled by patients receiving treatment for things like a car accident injury or a stroke. And this dot represents one person who's healthy and decides to go out like usual. They jump on the subway and head into the office where they catch COVID-19. But they don't feel sick right away and might not for several days. So later, they go to a basketball game, where they unknowingly infect two or three more people. Most of these people will have relatively mild cases, but one might be an elderly person with a severe case who will eventually have to go to the hospital. But these three, who are all infected but don't feel sick, go out again, on the subway, into the office, and then out after work, infecting several more people, 20% of whom will need to go to the hospital. Over a short period of time, this process multiplies the number of people going to the hospital each day. Before long, the hospital is full and a crisis begins. People with severe cases of COVID-19 can't get treatment, and some who could be saved die. Plus, people with other issues can't get treatment either, and some of them die. This surge of severe cases causes avoidable deaths. That's what happened in South Korea, Iran, and Italy, all of which went from 100 to more than 5,000 cases in less than two weeks. A lot of people died because they couldn't get into the hospitals. The surge is made up of only severe cases, but it was generated by people who didn't feel sick, spreading the disease in public which means the people who can do the most to avoid these unnecessary deaths are these people. And that means all of us. To slow the virus down, you need to act as if you already have it. By avoiding public transportation, the office, crowded places, and even small social gatherings, you decrease your chances of both getting the disease and spreading it. This is called social distancing. If enough of us do it, the virus still spreads, but much slower. Over time, many people might still get infected, but fewer severe cases show up to the hospital each day, never overwhelming the system. This trend line gets flatter, these people can all get treatment, and fewer people die because of it. These are the two ways the COVID-19 pandemic can play out. But this one only happens if everyone does their part. And it's why experts and officials are urging people to flatten the curve by social distancing and staying home as much as possible. It's also why in the US, many companies are helping by requiring employees to work from home, and major sports leagues have canceled their games for the time being. It may seem drastic, but it's worked before. In 1918, the cities of Philadelphia and St. Louis were both hit by a flu pandemic, but they responded in different ways. In Philadelphia, health officials allowed a huge parade to go ahead. While in St. Louis, officials prepared. They closed schools, theaters, and bars. Philadelphia's hospitals were overwhelmed, and many more died as a result. But St. Louis was able to avoid those excessive deaths. A hundred years later, these are the two scenarios we face. A difference not in whether you get the coronavirus, but when you get it. That could mean the difference between life and death, maybe for someone you know. But we have to act now.
flavors for all human. You know that the best way to prevent the spread of coronavirus is to wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. But why? Virus. On. On. In constant during the last break, because I want to call myself hysterical, but our analysis and brainstorm and the callers and the guests and the, 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 the top lawyer and scientist that wrote the U.S. Biological Weapons Treaty that became world law have all said for over a month it's man-made. Major Indian universities, other scientific facilities have looked at it and go, my God, it's man-made. Well, of course we're concerned about that. So where did it come from in China? Now even the Pentagon says it's man-made. But what if it's really nothing? Well, the media hysteria to attack the stock market is what's real. And what's happened to the stock market is real. A 15-point loss of what's going to happen tomorrow. So, Mike, I interrupted a lot in this segment. You've got the floor. Did you bring up kind of the past points? I know that's important to set the table. But currently... Just pulling back from this, what God does through us. Now, Mike Adams is here with us, and I can sit here and talk for an hour before he comes on about the coronavirus. The thing he's saying is so true, and it's come true, and I've got all the articles and everything. I'm just like, hey, you're right, and this, and that. So this segment, I'm going to shut up. I want to hear from him. I want to get what he has to say. This guy researches so hard. He just has a lot of integrity. He just is really telling you what he believes is going on from the best analysis he's got. It's been dead on so far, like GPS or something. So it's, we got nine minutes left in the segment. I'm going to shut up. Mike, recap what you said, then get into the other news. I'm going to turn my microphone off. Well, then this could be the garrot that chokes America and Trump to death. Mike Adams laid out for us. I just know this. When I was trying to figure out over a month ago whether this was a big deal or not, I called around, not just our supplier. They said, yeah, it's all sold out. That's never been done before by government institutions. So that tells me they know food is going to be a big premium in the future, whether the virus is a big threat or not, or whether they're going to create a global hysteria that crashes the economy. And if you're in a Great Depression, food's going to be worth even more. So that's what I'm telling you is, any angle, any slice, any view.